Hi everyone. Uh, today I'm going to begin a project. Uh, this project is a clothing item and I'm making it for my sister. And I'm going to start uh, by drafting it, which means that I'm going to use some of my notebooks that I like to use. And I do have um, one of my favorite books here that I might use for inspiration, but I also might just make it up as I go. Uh, this is something my sister and I have talked about in the past. I made something similar for myself and she said, I want that. So being my gorgeous little sister who I love to spoil my little baby doll, I will be spoiling her. You may notice that this is a different location than I normally work from. Right now, my house is having an asbestos remediation. Um, a lot of our insulation got wet due to a burst pipe when it froze earlier this year. And now we're finally getting rid of it, but you know, turns out it has asbestos and it's a whole thing. So my ceiling's getting ripped out, the asbestos is getting taken away, and I'm at an Airbnb. Uh, it's actually really nice. Um, there might be some road noise because as you can see, that's actually a pretty major road in my area. Um, but it's just a really nice place to work and get some things done. I can't actually start sewing until I get back home. So, uh, time to start planning some projects. So, these are my notebooks that I'm going to be using. You might wonder why it's so exciting that I have these different notebooks. This is my original quilt book. It's actually getting used up. I tear a lot of pages out over time and... You know, this is what I use to plan my quilts. And you might think, that's crazy. What does all that mean? And I'm going to go through it um, with you guys today. But you can see that kind of, you know, I do a lot of math. I do a lot of full planning when I make quilts. Um, these are actually three iterations of the same quilt. I have to do a lot of math as to how many squares I need. This was when I was thinking about doing a hexagon quilt and said, no thanks, um, which turned into a triangle quilt. Um, and you can see that there were some other patterns that I did. This turned into a quilt that I made for my mom. I guess this is just turning into introducing you to my quilt book. This I made cats out of and how much I had to cut, you know, times four, all my math. Um, uh, this was just doing a border. I don't even know. Oh, what was that? This was my puppy dog quilt. So I did a cat quilt and I did a puppy dog quilt. This is a fancier pinwheel. Um, you know, there's just a lot of random things. There's also recipes in here. Um, I don't even know all of what I have in here. And you would think I would put things in there and I guess I did put, oh, it's for a Peter Pan collar. But yeah, I make a lot of quilts um, and I try and save all of my math when I make them. Sometimes the drawings that I do are more illustrative than others. This, I actually have a photo of the finished one on our website. I don't have photos for all of these because a lot of these are quilts that I just gave away. So this is my husband's Mario quilt. You can actually see that I, it's a pixel quilt. So it's all just designed as each square was a little square. Um, and I just did the math and then figured out how I would assemble it. And I think this might be the coins that were on the side. So the whole quilt was planned out like this. That's how my husband's Mario quilt went a thread thing. And why are these sewn? Because every once in a while, my sewing machine gets angry about tension and I just sew paper through it because that makes the whole machine go, whoa, 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 and reset. So 
Here's some more. This is actually a quilt that I did recently that's on the website. Um, this <clears throat> is a quilt that's on the website. This is some of my math that I'm doing for my own coat where I'm making a quilt and then cutting the pieces out. So these are, it's a very simple coat, but I had to do some math about how many squares I would need and then how much I would need to cut. A uh, very fiddly project. But you can see there's not that much actually left in this book. Um, so I bought myself a new one. Um, and you can see that this is grid pattern so that I can just literally draw what I'm thinking of into the grid pattern. I also have this, which I did clean out. It used to have other stuff. Um, I was using it as kind of a journal, but you know what? I am not consistent enough for a journal. So you can see that there's some pages missing from this stripe at the beginning. But th sometimes I like to draw without the squares because I want to be a little bit more um, freehand, like, oh no, over here, I need to draw rigidly. I need to like make sure that things are lining up with squares. Here, while I do have lines so that it just makes it a little bit easier to draw things, you know, to scale, uh, I can still just, I don't feel like the need to be as precise as I do with this one. Um, so this is where I'm going to do some original planning for my sister's uh, t-shirt quilted top. And that's going to be a lot of fun. All right. Earlier when I introduced that this notebook is where I was going to do this project and probably most of the projects that I do moving forward, I said, oh, it's all clean and untouched. No, it's not. I have a quilt there that I made. I have, I don't know what that is. And I have a quilt there that I didn't end up making. I ended up going with a simpler pattern, but maybe I'll make that in the future. Now we're on a clean page. So this is one of my favorite books and I don't always use it very clearly, but I'm planning on in the future doing a series where I make one sample of all 501 of the quilt blocks in this book. What I like about this book is that it's all rotary cut. So that means that it's all triangles and squares and rectangles. Um, and so it's very easy to do the math on. Anytime you have curves and other things, it's hard to figure out exactly how much fabric you would need to do a whole quilt. Um, now for my sister's project, we're doing a t-shirt quilt, uh, a t-shirt made out of quilting fabric. Um, sometimes I just want inspiration of different options um, that I could do for like a main one panel thing. And that's what I love about this book. It's very colorful. It's very colorful. And it just gives you a vibrant, exciting thing. Like, you know, I can say, oh, I'm thinking about something maybe like flying geese or perhaps a bear claw. And then you can just kind of look through this and you can see a lot of like, oh, that's not a flying geese, but I really like that idea. Or, you know, here's a bear claw, but actually it ends up looking like flowers. Um, and so that's why I really love this book, because it just gives you a lot of variations. And there are some that are very complex and there are some that are very simple. Um, you know, here's a very simple flying goose, flying geese flying shuttles, um, it just gives you a fun idea. And so I also think it would be really fun to just make one of every single block in this entire book and make that into a quilt. So that might be a future project. So basically, now that I have this all sort of planned out, generally what the shapes are going to be, I need to not be in, air, in an Airbnb and I need to go home and actually do some pattern making a little bit. I'm just going to self-draft this um, and then I'll cut it out of muslin and try it on because my sister and I are roughly the same size, makes it easy. Um, and then once I have 
the actual sizes of the pattern pieces that this is gonna be cut out of, I can start doing the math on how exactly to cut out all of these different pieces. And so an example of what that looks like is over here, this is for a coat that I'm making for myself. I knew that I was gonna do six inch blocks just in general. Um, and so I did flying geese on the sleeves. And basically what I do is I say, what's the widest it's gonna be? 19 inches. What's the height gonna be? 26. So then I'm going to make a rectangle that is that wide and that high. And then I'm gonna cut this piece out of it. And then I did the same for the front panels because it opens in the front. So there's gonna be two panels of two by four. And then the back piece, which is one larger piece, is a panel like this. And then you can see I did the math of all of the squares that I was going to need for the fronts, for the back. And then, then I started doing all of the math, the math on how many squares do I need in order to create this pattern. And so then I do the math of how many strips do I need to cut because I love a rotary cut quilt. Um, and then I obviously did the same thing for the flying geese, but you can see like the math got weird. And then I tried to do some actual math and um, failed and it didn't help me. And I ended up just cutting and figuring it out uh, using scraps. Because while I love math, let's admit it, I'm not perfect at it. So that's the plan. We've got the patterns decided. I'll go home and confirm the fabrics I'm using and make sure I have enough. And I will actually do the pattern making steps so that I can then bring it into this and do the actual math and visualizing of the pattern. Hi everyone. Um, so it's been about a day since uh, we were at the Airbnb. I'm back home now. Um, my house is still under construction, but I am back home and I have my sewing machine and I have all my materials, more than just my books. Um, so we're going to start doing the next step, which is patterning. And I self-draft my patterns and I've never been taught. It's all self-taught. So I'm probably doing it the wrong way. And you know what? It's going to work out. That's the nice thing about projects like this, where it's for a family member and they don't really know what to expect other than they liked the idea of a boxy quilted um, t-shirt. So let's turn this camera around and show you what we're working with. So, um, just an idea of what we're dealing with. That is um, the wall in the middle of my house. Oh boy. This, however, is what I wanted. So these are sheets that I got um, in a thrift store at some point. And that's what I use to make my muslins out of. This one had stains on it um, when I bought it. Looked like someone like poured a glass of wine on it. And um, I don't always want to take useful things from thrift stores when I'm just planning on cutting them up. But no one is ever going to buy a stained sheet. And so I did. And I'm cutting it up and I don't feel bad about it. This one, similarly, um, this is not the only hole in it. Um, it just had a bunch of them. And again, I was like, nobody's actually going to ever use this as a sheet ever again. So I'm going to buy it from this thrift store and use it as muslins. Um, that's just kind of how I roll. And then these two things are the two patterns that I self-drafted and sort of self-drafted. This is the one for my spider web shirt that I've mentioned before. I'll eventually get a project picture of that. Um, entirely self-drafted 100%. This one is my coat pattern, um, which I did print off for free from a check site. I will link the site in the comments in case you want to, um, you know, go to their website and download it. 
but it's just a very basic pattern and I kind of want to look at the back panel of this of the coat which I might use for the front panel and the back panel of the t-shirt so let's unfold these and get a good look at them all right the math begins to come out obviously we have this original thing one thing I also when I was trying on the muslin and I was like well I can just cut the neck hole in after I've made the quilt because I'm going to make quilting through there and I can just decide then whether I wanted to make it shallower and put a vent in the back or make it deeper so you can fit your head through the hole. Another thing that I am going to do at the end and decide how loopy I want it to be um, and that sort of thing is the wave at the bottom. So just so you know, I have it as a straight cut the wave will come into it and I'll decide that later. So now I'm going through these plans and I'm starting to do math now that I have real numbers. I'm starting with the sleeve because it's actually a little, you know, these are both pretty rectangle. You can see that the uh, back and the shirt are both the same height, but that the shirt is a little bit wider. Um, but this is the sleeve side, and when I measured the muslin, it was 16 and a half inches tall by 19 inches wide. So I kind of decided, well, you know what, math would be really easy on that if it was 20 inches wide, and then I'll just have a little bit of cutting on either side, and 16 inches tall, and the sleeve will be a little bit shorter. It's not like this is something where I'm particularly trying to... Um, make it be exactly a specific way. This is supposed to be a short sleeve shirt. The sleeve kind of reaches above my elbows. Um, and so it's going to be half an inch shorter. You know, what a crime. The, bi the bias taping will add a little bit of space on that anyways. So I can just plan on cutting a panel of 16. So once I decided that 16 and 20 are so easily divided by uh, four, I did I did a full drawing of what it would look like and so each of these little squares are going to be four inches and then I had previously decided on flying geese which I so crudely drew here here's a more accurate representation and then I started doing the math of how much uh, fabric or how many squares I would need to make four inch squares so I need 40 birds to make 20 squares, I need 40 birds and 40 backgrounds. So looking at this picture, this is a bird right here. This part is bird. And then you have the two background squares. Um, so that's why I decided on bird and background. I may choose two fabrics to be background. I may choose one fabric to be background. Um, but when I'm deciding fabrics, I probably will think about them in terms of are they bird or are they background and um, so that's why I just kind of wrote it like that. I drew here a really crappy exploded picture of what this is um, in terms of the actual pieces that I'm going to cut. So this was my shorthand like I have squares that I'm going to need to cut to make triangles. I have squares these are the triangles that are going to be pieced together to make the whole thing. Now, if I want this whole thing when it's sewed together to be four inches, so we'll just say four inches, every time there is a seam horizontally, then we need to add essentially a half inch. And every time there's a seam vertically, we need to add a half inch. So each of these little squares, since they get one seam in between them, to make four inches, once these two triangles are sewn together, we know that they need to be 2.5 inches. And that's what they need to be after this tr the two triangles are sewn together. Then, if we look at that, there's one seam, so they actually need to be three inches. So, so the square, that I literally cut in half like this, you know, boop, 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 boop. Sorry, I'm doing this through my camera. So hitting actual corners is hard. Um, 
the measurement of this line and this line, which essentially makes them a square, needs to be three inches before I cut them horizontally and then sew them back together. So I need four three inch squares to make, I'm sorry, I need four three inch squares of fabric because that's one square, the two triangles from the one square and the two triangles from the other square, and then two triangles from one square and two triangles from another square. So that's four pieces of three inch uh, fabric that I need to make a single four inch square. And this is why doing math is important and why you're like, oh, you buy all this yardage, but you're not even making that much of a quilt. It's because you lose a lot to seaming and you have to do this math because otherwise you're never going to achieve panels that are the same size and you're going to be making only baby quilts. It takes a lot of fabric to make a quilt. Um, piecing really eats it up and that is just a, f a fact of the game. So I know that I need three inch squares because I'm going to be cutting them all in half to make these four inch blocks. So I need two because there's two birds and two backgrounds in each four inch square. So if I have 20 squares, I need 40 birds and 40 backgrounds. So now that I know that I need these to be three inch, I'm going to, oh gosh, I can't actually do this math right here because I need the calculator on my phone because I'm pathetic and I double and triple check and don't trust myself. But basically, I know that um, from one end of the fabric to the other is either, depending on the fabric and the manufacturer, 42 inches at the lowest and, I mean, could be 56, but it's more like 42 to 44 is about what you should expect. And certainly the fabric that I'm using is in the 42 to 44 range. I always assume 42 because you never want to get lucky in the other way. Um, so a three inch stretch, I would cut strips that are, you know, three inches tall and I would just cut that strip out of the fabric. And then I would go through the strip and cut the strip into the three inch squares that I will then cut into triangles to make the triangles that I'm looking for. And then I'll start sewing everything together. But, okay, so 42 divided by three. Okay, thank goodness this isn't like a three and a half. I can actually do this math. It's 30 means 10. And then I have 12 left over, which means four. So I can get 14 out of every strip of fabric I cut. And so that means of the birds, I need 40. I get 14. 14 times two is 28. 14 times three is going to be 30, 40 odd, but at least 40 with some left over. So that means that I need three strips of each of these. So then I'll write that down, you know, three strips. And, uh, and then three strips. And so here's the thing. It's got like some odd added to it, uh, which makes it easier. So if I decide to do this all one fabric, it's three strips of the same fabric. If I decide I want to do this in two fabrics, I can do one strip in one fabric and two in another, and I just have more of one color bird. And the same with the background. That map I can do, that math I can do later once I've picked out the fabric. So that's what I say when I'm doing the math. And this is a very simple one. Looking at the pattern that I've decided for the back and the front, um, I'm going to do that math, but I'm not going to try and do it on camera because I'm probably going to need to check my calculator a embarrassing amount of times. So let's get the panels figured out for the front and back. Hi everybody, I am taking a quick break because I have updates. I did not film any of this because I started the project before I decided I was going to start filming projects. And also because to a certain degree, it was a proof of concept and I was kind of making things up as I went along um, and redoing them and seem ripping just like crazy. Um, so because of that, I didn't film it. 
However, it is the saddest thing in my life. These, obviously I'm trying to work through my stash. I'm not buying any new fabric until I like significantly decrease the amount of fabric that I currently have. These are all Bumblebee and Ladybug fabrics that I love. I love these fabrics. I've been saving them for a project for myself um, that I would do sometime in the future. Um, in an effort to try not to be too precious with my fabrics, I said, you know what? I'm going to make myself a coat as a proof of concept of coat making as opposed to just a flat quilt. And I'm going to use these special fabrics, including also my pine cone fabric for the lining. I use the muslins that I self-drafted myself. Um, I added pockets. I did everything that I wanted. And it's just a little too small. I can put it on, um, but it's not wide enough in the back shoulders. I have incredibly wide shoulders. All of the ladies in my family, we're all tall. We all have wide shoulders. That's how it is. Um, and this coat doesn't fit. It pulls my shoulders way back uncomfortably, which makes the sleeves not fit in the front because they are getting pulled so far back. And then because the back is too small, then the front pieces are pulling apart and kind of, again, in the bottom of the coat down towards the back, which means the fact that the pockets were on a side seam makes them way too far back. Having pockets on a side seam is already pretty wide. Um, and when the front piece is getting pulled further back your side because the back piece is too small, then it you, like literally you're twisting your arm behind your back to get your hands into the pockets. Um, so a basically devastating thing where my favorite fabrics that I was trying not to be precious about and sewed into this beautiful coat and I will never wear it because it just isn't comfortable and doesn't fit me right. So I'm heartbroken. Uh, that also means that other projects that I was basing off of this pattern, assuming that it would fit someone my size, i.e. for my sister Mindy, who is slightly smaller, um just because she hasn't had two kids and struggled to lose that baby weight, but, um, but not significantly. So if I brought this coat to her, it would be too tight in the shoulders. Same as me. I know it for a fact. Um, which means that I need to upsize her t-shirt thing that I was making for her and start from scratch in a certain, uh, mindset and that's like so frustrating and so heartbreaking but that's what I'm doing um the other thing uh that I did learn from making this absolutely beautiful coat that doesn't fit me is that while it looks perfectly fine and looks great um it probably would just look a little bit better if it had a collar instead of just um I just did quilt binding along the neckline and it's comfortable and it fit, sits in the right places um except for the fact that it's a little tight in the back which makes these front pieces pull apart but um it just would look better with a collar and then one thing my husband said is you should add a hood and here's the thing would I ever put the hood up myself not necessarily. I'm generally one of those people where if it's raining, I'll just let it rain on my head. Um, I'm from Seattle, y'all. It's a different, it's a different thing. Um, rain is inevitable and it happens all the time and people have their own preferences of how they deal with having to hang out in the rain. Personally, I'd rather have wet hair than um, just have a clothing item that is then soaking wet. Um, so I generally don't put hoods up. I have a raincoat that has a hood and I just layer it and it's quite big because I layer several sweaters. I layer. I literally have gone out and been teased by family members who are like, how many layers are you wearing? Oh, I'm wearing two shirts, uh, two sweaters layered on top of each other and my coat. 
my coat is well big enough that I could wear one of these with a hood underneath my raincoat easily. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to draft a hood for this coat um, just because I think that will make the neckline look a little bit better. God, it's so cute. I'm just so heartbroken. Look at these stars and all of the beautiful bee fabrics. I'm never going to get over this. Never. Um, but yeah, so I'm making a new jacket version two before I make Mindy's thing because I need to know that things will fit me before I know if they'll fit her. And also I'm not seeing her for like another month and a half. So I have time to make several thing coats if I need to. Good morning, friends. Um, I'm really excited. Uh, last time I talked to you, I was horrifically upset because the coat that I made for myself did not fit. Um, and was not like alterable. Uh, so I went back to the drawing board. I remade all of my pattern pieces to make myself a new item and it fits great. So now that I actually have the pattern pieces that I know work really well, I feel a lot more confident about making more pieces. And I'm really glad that I took a break from making something for my, for my sister, which I've been recording, to make sure that I had things right. I think it's disappointing when things that you make for yourself don't work out, but at the same time, it's like, eh, you know, it happens. But I bought special fabric. I did all of these things to make this uh, t-shirt pattern uh, for my sister. And so the idea that it wouldn't fit her is just like so sad. Can you imagine like, especially when you spend so much time on something and then you give it to the person and they're so ready to love it and wear it all the time. And then it doesn't fit and they can't. And that is, I think, just about as sad as making something. Like, I think that's sadder because then it's not just me that's disappointed. It's me and my sister who are both disappointed. So now that I have all my pattern things figured out, let's show you the fabric. All right, first thing I wanna do is say that instead of the wrench and complicated pattern that I had done before, I'm doing light and shadows for this quilt. Um, so partly because I have three fabric options and I was looking and seeing if I wanted to do a sort of log cabin variety. And then I saw this, which not a log cabin, but also not as, very simple, no triangles, that sort of thing. Um, and I just thought it would look really good. So here's the pattern. And this obviously is from my favorite book, Judy Hopkins, 501 Rotary Cup Quilt Blocks. And then I'm doing, so you can see that that's what this looks like and you know how much I need to cut of each thing. Um, and then for the sleeve, which is a short sleeve, I'm doing this pattern so that like from the top of the sleeve to the sides, it'll just be a little bit of a chevron of the three patterns. This one obviously has triangles, but this is one block and this is the entire piece. Uh, the front and the back will be nine blocks square of this block. So this is just for me. Um, but these are not to the same scale at all. Um, but yeah, so I know how much I need to cut, which is actually less than a yard for each, which is kind of exciting for me. Um, that means that I'll have fabric left over. So now to get to the special fabric for my sister. Ooh, this first fabric um, is the first fabric that really caught my eye in terms of things that my sister would like. She's not necessarily a like fancy floral person, but she does like more drawn flowers and things like that. So I knew that she would like this. And the number one reason I knew she would like this, and it also has little bugs and it's got little, um, 
grasshopper bugs and it's got snails uh, is because my sister number one loves whimsy and this just seems very whimsical. Also, it's orange and bright colors and she is primary colors, rainbow colors, beautiful. So I was extremely lucky and oh, is it the same fabric in a really lovely uh, variation of colors that will really complement and stand out and be exciting and still has all that same whimsy. I don't know anything about this fabric other than it feels really good. So it feels like nice and high quality. And that is because I got it at um, a fabric consignment thrift store where I'm going to have some of my fabric put in. And I was just there and I saw these and I was like, whimsy, I love it. And to go with them, this is not part of the same pattern, but it's this striped with these like floral leafy motifs. And I just really liked that because it's very bright um, and it has yellow, which neither, well, this one has yellow, but it really brings in all of the colors and it has that same whimsy with the masculine stripe and the very feminine flower. And I just thought, oh, my sister's gonna love that. So these are the three fabrics that I'm going to be making her shirt out of. I will likely be making the lining out of something else, which I may decide at the last second. I'll let you know. But the time has come to cut out my strips, rotary cut, and then start sewing blocks. And I'm so, so excited. Pun intended. All right, the time has come to show everybody the finished project. Um, I just now got a system where I could in the future record things and then do like a speed up time lapse. I didn't have that technology ability uh, at the beginning of this project. And so in future projects, you'll actually see me making the item. But the final finished project for my sister's t-shirt. Oh, it's so nice. I'll have to step back a little bit so you can see it in all of its glory. Uh, it looks like a blocky t-shirt. And I get that. That was the goal. It does have a little swoop at the bottom. And you can see that I obviously decided to just finish the sleeves. And the sleeves are a slightly different pattern than I originally blocked out because I cut all the little blocks for what I was going to do for the sleeve and then realized I hadn't cut enough and then I was really tired. And so I said, I'll just add some strips at the bottom and at the top. And honestly, I kind of like how that looks anyways. Uh, you can see the pattern is right here. If that's, I don't know, where does it start? It starts here. In any case, I think it looks great. I think it is bold, bright, and more. Uh, it's very more is more. Um, as for the interior lining, I actually used the fabric that I was originally thinking I would use to make this shirt um, before I went to, as I said, the thrift store and found this beautiful other fabric that I thought was more whimsical. So it's rainbows on the back lining it is a really fun sort of rainbow bubble the front lining rainbow hearts and the sleeves are rainbow sprinkles so technically uh she could turn this inside out and just be a uh rainbow queen if that's what she wanted in the moment um it does fit me uh, you can kind of see it actually kind of pulls in a little bit. It's very flattering and lovely. So this is the finished project, a blocky t-shirt for my sister, uh, because she really liked my blocky t-shirt that I made for myself, my spider web shirt that I uh, regularly talk about, but isn't always in my videos. So there it is, the final product. Uh, and my first long form video. Let's uh, do more in the future and learn from this and do a little bit better maybe too. Bye.